Hello, I'm Max Balegde. And so am I. Oh. <gasps> I've been CGI all along. Oh, uh, just like the comments say. I don't know what that means, by the way. No, I'm well, really confused. Yeah. They, say, they said last episode that the CGI is getting worse. They say that every episode, but I yeah, don't but know I don't what know that, that means. Does that mean that I'm getting worse? I think so, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Anyway, I agree. Uh, and, and, uh, this is the useless hotline. <laughs> TikTok wasn't working out for us, and neither is my CGI. Aww. Um, the useless hotline is a place where we help you with your queries, no matter how weird, disgusting, or embarrassing. I thought you were going to throw something at me then for some reason. In the corner of my eye, it looked like you were going... No. They are. Sorry, I finished my line. <laughs> <laughs> but it won't always just be us. Ooh. Some weeks we'll be joined by a special guest. Mm. We will, but not this week. No. Um, however, important news, guys. You might have realised, okay, I've seen some of the comments. You know, they used to do the the once a month somebody would take over something. Yeah, you know, well, Max has got some news. He's pregnant. Yeah, guys. So once a month, nothing comes out anymore. <laughs> No, um, but yeah, I feel like we, we dropped the ball a bit with the podcast mm -hmm. because we were so busy coming up to Christmas time and then freshly into the new year, we had to bulk film some episodes, but I just rest assured people, yes, people. we have got plans for the next few months and the useless hotline 2.0 is coming, baby. Think guests, think segments, think sexual tension. Oh, nothing's changed. <laughs> it's the exact same podcast it always been. It has. I mean, what? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I just, I just wanted to get that out of the way, just to, just to rest your little, little souls. And before we go on as well, back to the CGI thing. What does that mean? I want to know. I see these comments. Generated images. No, I know what that means. Shut up. Well, I actually didn't know it meant that. <laughs> 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 I don't know what I thought it stood for, but I didn't know it was that. Thank you for telling me. Um, well, that's a fun game. Before we go back into this. Oh, you're I gonna do them. I'll find actual the... ones. Yeah, and you and say then... what you think they mean. Right. Okay. Just in case you don't speak mine and George's internal language, um, because I realised that verbally we didn't really say what we're doing, but we were both on the same wavelength. <laughs> so he's... <laughs> we actually it? didn't say anything. Anagram. Uh, no, anagram, uh, inagram. In a, um, acronym. 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 So George is going to say some actual acronyms, and I'm going to guess what they mean. Okay. Because I'm, um, I'm not, I've not got a lot of general knowledge, so this could be very entertaining. Okay. FOMO. That's obvious. You know that one. Fear of missing out. Yes. FYI. Um, for your info, for your info, mish, information, for yeah. your information. It pisses me off when people go for your FYI. For your FYI. Get in the bin. I'm sorry. Um, NASA. Oh, <laughs> national. Ooh. Just think about what NASA is. Oh, the space people. Yeah. National. Aliens. Alien. No, it's not oh, aliens. Oh, okay. <laughs> national. <laughs> national aerospace, aerodynamic. Is it aerospace? Actually fairly close with aerodynamic. Really? Aero national Aerodynamic Space Association. National and space were correct. Oh, Aerodynamic, not correct. Okay. It's aeronautic. What the fuck is an aeronautic? And then instead of association, it's administration. Isn't nautical like the sea? Boats? Yeah. Why on earth would it be? Oh, it's like boats in the sky. Is that what they see a spaceship as? Something like that. Yeah. Okay, next one. Um. <laughs> oh, a spaceship. A spaceship. It's called a spaceship. What? It's called a spaceship. Nautical, aeronautical. That makes sense. Space, ship. I don't know why this is space and this is ship, but... Right, scuba. What do you think scuba stands for? I feel like you can work through this one. Sea, couldn't, under, beach. Sea, current, under, beach. Shut up. Where's the A? Oh. And let's go diving. Sea, current, under, beach. Am I right? Shut Not up. Not yet. Is there an... Oh, my God. Sea, current, under, beach. Ah... Come on, you need to get oh this last god. one. Oh my god, are those four right? I'm... Oh my god, if I'm right, this is wild behaviour. Sea current under beach and... No, sea current under beach at... No. Just think about water. <sighs> Begin with A. Atlantic. Oh. Arshan. Uh, Ak. Aqua. Sea current under beach aqua. All of them wrong. Oh. <laughs> are you joking? <laughs> I thought I 
worked it so well though. That's really pissed me off. Come on, what is it then? Are you joking me? Did I actually not get any of that? <laughs> Are you joking? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I did get some right. No, I no, that oh. I was joking. Obviously, you got them all wrong. Oh. Sea current under beach aqua. <laughs> what the? Oh, they I all fancy. Apply. <laughs> Weather looks good today. Should we do, go do some sea current under beach aqua? Dive in. That makes so much sense. Go on. What? Um. Okay. The last. The la The A is apparatus. Why would it be that? Because that's like gymnastics. The type of diving. The, the apparatus oh, that you apparatus need to wear. Can be unfair. Right, what, come okay. on, just tell me the whole thing. No, I'll give you the I'll give you the S C and the it's A. It's C. It's C. Is the S C? I mean, <laughs> is the C C? <laughs> is the S C? No, S C is hyphenated, self-contained, and last word apparatus. Self-contained under beach apparatus. Under is half correct. Underwater yeah. beach. Underwater diving. You, you, what the hell? What does a scuba oh, help oh, you do? What yeah, does a scuba? What? Breathing. Breathing. Under breathing. Underwater breathing apparatus. Yeah, self contained underwater breathing. That beach. makes sense. Oh, okay. Much more sense yeah, it does. than sea. What did what you did even I say? say? Sea current under beach aqua. <laughs> <laughs> you tit. Oh, okay. Right, do one more. Do one more. Okay. Um,. That's a good one. This looks like I'm drinking swamp juice, by the way, for our visual viewers, as opposed to our audio viewers. Um, this is a matcha. This is a matcha. Hashtag not spawn. Um, okay. What does IQ stand for? See, this means intelligence, and I don't actually know what it stands for, so <laughs> this literally is just making me look stupid. No, This is a no. setup. This is a setup, because you no, know no. that I'm not going to know it. I personally didn't know this. Well, it's a level of intelligence. It's like the intelligence test. In, invert, in, internal, internal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where. I don't know Absolutely no way. Internal. That you've said, this is something about intelligence. It, it tested your intelligence. It's the intelligence test. What is the I? Mm, internal. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't want to do this anymore. Right, intelligence. <laughs> and the oh. Q. What do you think the Q Questions. Be? Intelligence questions! <laughs> That's what an IQ test, an intelligence question test. Yeah. Yeah? No, is it actually that? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. Oh. Intelligence quota. Close. Quota I'll graphic. It. I'll give you it. Intelligence quotient is the... Oh, yeah, because everyone knows the word quotient, don't they? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Right. Okay, well, last one, because right. it's, it's okay, quite okay. funny. Okay. What do you think SWAT stands for? You know, like a SWAT team. Oh. Someone wants a twatting. <laughs> Correct. Um, <laughs> I actually have no idea. Special. Yes. Weaponry. Close. I'll give weapon, you it. Weapon. Special weapon. Assault team. Shut up. I better be shut up. Shut up. Go on. That tell me. arguably makes more sense. Yeah. Yeah. See, Not intelligent. Put me on the IQ list. <laughs> Put me on internal questions list. Yeah. What Special weapons. The A stands for and, which is a bit of a shit That's one. so dumb. <laughs> Think military. <laughs> military tees. Term, terminal. Terminals. Not not airport tees. <laughs> <laughs> Tank. Special weapons and tank. <laughs> Tanks. Technical. That's all right, mate. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Special weapons and technology. <sighs> Tyranny. I'm not sure how that's relevant. Tight. Tight. <laughs> Tight. Special weapons and. Don't ever whisper that again. Tight. Special, Special weapons, weapons and, and tights. <laughs> That's what you'll find if you look in my wardrobe. Um. Special weapon in tights. Special weapons and 
No, I'm not getting. I'm not getting this. I'm sorry. Tactics. Tactical. I don't. That, mine's better. Someone. Someone wants a twat in. I'm sorry. That's. Sorry, I've just seen another one. I. I really want you to know. I really, just one right. More. Okay. Last one. one last one. one last, last one. One last one. YMCA. What does the YMCA stand for? Young man. Young man. They're the words of the song. I don't <laughs> know. Is he a good dad? <laughs> Hi. Young man, <laughs> what do you think you've been doing? <laughs> young man, there's no need to... Is it young? Is the young first man, one young? come here! <laughs> is the first one young? Yes. Is it actually? Okay. Yes. So, let I me won't think. give away any Young man, there's no need to feel down. I said, young man, get your feet off the ground. I said, come on, come. Young come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right, Max. YNC stands for young man come. Oh, and what's the last one? <laughs> Is it anything to do with the words in the song? Because um, why does it say come down to the YMCA? Because the YMCA is actually a thing. Is it a place? Um, I assume so, if you can come down there. Right, young, multifaceted, multicultural, young multicultural centre alert. That's what they say when there's a new one in the area. <laughs> Young Multicultural Centre Alert. I have no, no idea. I have no idea. It's Young Men's Something oh. Association. You, young Men's Club Association. No. Go on. Young right, YMCA, men's... what could it be? Young Men's Something Association. Oh. Young Men's... Party. What are, they, what are they partying about? What's their... Community. What's the whole thing? Community. Sort of. It's a type of community. Um... You all right? <laughs> young men's counters young men's clapping young men's i honestly have no idea at all young men's think of groups of people that can be community that can be uh described with the letter beginning with c it's not community young men's um i really i really genuinely have no idea here is it a is it a is it a C that sounds like surf when you say it? No. Oh, okay. Unless you're saying it wrong. Young men's kind of, kind of, carnivores. I have no idea. The Young Men's Carnivores Association. Association. Go on, what is it? Christian. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. That gay song where they're like, <laughs> is about the Young Men's Christian Association. <laughs> yep, big time. You're, you're lying me. They're basically what? just going around going, <laughs> Come to the Christian house. <laughs> Let's go to church. I That's don't believe song. that. I'm sorry. Translated. You can. I mean, I do believe. Although that people often song. think um, of the YMCA or the Y as a simple low cost gym, the facilities have their roots in Victorian England during the muscular Christian movement. Wow. No, that's so bizarre. Um, anyway, right, moving on. I have 119 locations. You're never going to guess who like came over to me. And like grabbed my arm and spoke to me at a movie premiere last week. Try and guess. Is it someone that you've had beef with? Yes. Do their does their name begin with E? Yes. That doesn't narrow down who you've had beef with. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Is it Alphabet Orion Doc and Sue? Ek and Sue. <laughs> Ek and Sue. I'm I'm not even exaggerating. I walked past her. And I've bumped into her several times since, like, we had the whole situation speaking about her on the podcast. Yeah. We're speaking about her boyfriend at the time on the podcast. At the time? I, I don't know. Well, let me let me finish my story anyway. Max, um, she's just... I don't know if they're still together. Amends. I don't know. But um, she, like, I, I've walked past her a few times. I typically just, like, look at her and then realise it's her and then, like, carry on walking because I'm like... What like what's like she doesn't like me, it is what it is. Um mm. but on this occasion she looks at me, smiles at me, so I smile back and I'm obviously thrown off, like, what's happening? Mm. And then as I pass her, she goes, Max, grabs my arm. So then I'm we're like and on you a just start doing the tango together. Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I'm like, what the hell is going on? And she goes, she goes, It's nice to see you. And I'm go and I'm like, Oh, okay. And then she's like, it's, it's really nice to see you. She goes, I hope you're okay. And I'm like, 
is she about to punch me in the face? Like, what's going on? Like, what is happening? Have you but been I in was... a fight before? I don't think that's like no how they normally start. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was like... Holy shit, she's going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was like, is this like a lie? Like, what's... Is she about to be like, jokes, lol? Like, so I was just very shocked. And I was like, oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. It was very lovely. But I was very confused, like deeply confused. Mm. And then... Um, she goes to me and then like we go our separate ways like she goes inside I had to go and get my picture taken I come back into the um, cinema where like the movie is she's there waiting for you good yeah <laughs> no 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 um, and just before I go in she's there again and I speak to her um, and sure no she grabbed her house no no she grabbed me again and she was like Max I just need to go she went I'm sorry and I was like oh thank you that means a lot and she was like I just wish I reacted differently. And I was like, well, you know, you, you were defending your boyfriend. Like, it is what it is. Like, I, I get it. I was like, I wish that it didn't play out like that as well. I was like, but do you know what? Let's just move past it. Imagine how shocked I was. And I just couldn't believe it. I was like, what is going on? Like, she was so lovely to me. So nice. And apologized. So I apologized as well. Because I was like, I've been a bit of a dick to you. Like, I was just like, kind of play. I didn't take it that deep because I knew that... I wasn't lying about like the situation. So yeah. like, um, I, I, I never really felt bad about it because I was more annoyed that you were attacking me on the basis, calling me a liar when I knew that I wasn't a liar. Fair yeah. enough. Maybe it shouldn't have been brought up in the first place, but like it was kind of, <laughs> it was kind of brought up in an organic way. Like we were talking about how like some mm. relationships in, in the industry aren't fake. I, based on my experience, thought that their relationship wasn't real, but come to find out on her side, it was very real, basically. Um, so what the hell? I know, imagine my reaction. I didn't tell you because I thought I'd wait till now. What a great time to tell me. I know, but like, imagine my reaction. She was so lovely. Like, I, 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 was, I, was, just, I was just like confused by the whole situation. But then I was like, well, but then we both got dragged apart from each other because like her publicist, publicist? Publicist. No, you're nearly Publicist. Keep going. <laughs> her publicist, or whatever, took her, took her off. <laughs> took her off. And then the guy that was like taking me through took me through. And they were like, right, you're going to miss the start of the movie. Come on, you need to go. And I was like, I'll catch up with you later. But I never caught up with her. So I might message, shall I message her and be like, hey, thank you for being nice. Like, yeah. Want to chat about it on the podcast? <laughs> Ekin Sue, if you're out there, listen, I think that you're an icon. I also just want to clarify that I have always stand Ekin Sue. I did, I was pissed off at oh, her. Oh, I first thought you couldn't stand Ekin Sue. <laughs> no, when she was on Love Island, I've never, <laughs> when she was on Love Island, I, I've i never seen a more like iconic, like reality TV person. She's on Traitors in the um, US right now and I've not watched Is it she? yet, but apparently she's iconic on that. Yeah, she's on with like loads of um, reality TV stars from the US oh. um, and I was more so shocked that after the situation, I had like more beef technically with Ekin Sue as opposed to her counterpart when like the whole situation was with her counterpart, if you get what I mean, nice. allegedly. The alleged it. situation, <laughs> the alleged to... <laughs> situation was allegedly with X person and Y person. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, I just, how crazy, how mad. That. Ekin Sue, if you are free and you would like to come and chat on the podcast, I think that that would be iconic. Um, so or this is a public... Uh, DMs are open, just slide in. <laughs> right. George is very much saying, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> I'm not joking about that, actually, but yeah. No, and she was so nice. I couldn't believe... Imagine my shock when she was just being genuinely so nice to me. I was like, what the fuck is going on? I, Because she has such a way about her when you speak to her. And I thought this the first time I spoke to her as well. It's almost like... She exists, like, everything she says is with so much, like, seriousness and, like, that you almost feel like you're watching, like, a soap opera. I can't explain it. <laughs> she grabbed me and it was like we were in it's a movie. It's like you're watching acting. <laughs> yeah. Nice way to put it, Max. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but I mean, like, because she's so, she was so sincere in what she was saying mm. that I was like, oh, my God, this is, like, a wild, like, thing. But, yeah, anyway, I'll stop going on about it now. But I was just very shocked about it. And I wanted to call you and tell you, but I thought I'd get your raw reaction. I thought we'd raw dog it here on the podcast. Yeah. Mm. Turn down that segment in the past, haven't you? Yes, I have actually. But yeah. suddenly when it's on your terms, it's okay. Absolutely, baby. Um, what about you? Anybody re-emerged in your life? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
<laughs> no, not really. Oh, that's boring. Um, <laughs> what has occurred? Um, I don't. I not not a lot. I've <clears throat> not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so entertaining. God, tell us, tell us more. Um, oh my God, that's crazy, George. I found out the other day that my jokes hey. got cut from the Sidemen video. Ah, uh, no what wonder jokes they weren't were they? loving me in the comments. <laughs> but they weren't loving you. Wow. Uh, no, the, the comments were fine. Oh, that was going to say, I'll fight the, 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 the first one where I was in, uh, the comments were a bit better. Ah, uh, okay. So you're comparing yourself to your last performance. Um, Is this not the one where you hosted it, though? You yeah, like, so I, how I did left it get the cut? shoot and I was like, I have not done a good job there at all. Why? I was like, I was, I've said like a, a couple of funny things, uh, but it turns out a couple of funny things I, I'd said I actually didn't get in the oh. video. But I, I mean, they were quite funny. There was... Oh, um, so basically, Big Star One Two Three. I'm not sure if you are aware. Explain does, the video for people who are uh, so what it is. We and then. did. Um, well, they did like a cook off, mm. and there was an imposter who had to try and ah, uh, yes. ruin the meal mm. for them. Um, and one of the courses, they had an espresso martini, oh. and Vic was there uh, creating his espresso martini. Mm. And Vic is a keen DJ. Ah. Uh, has made a song with uh, I think I believe it's Steve Walker. No, Steve Aoki and Alan Walker. Oh, um, that's so sick. Yeah, um, so I went over and I said, huh, "This would be a funny little joke." I was like, "Ah, oh, nice to see you. You're making the drinks. It feel weird um, mixing without Steve and Alan here." Ah, enjoyable. Right? I thought yeah. that was quite enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, clearly, the editor didn't think so. <laughs> Maybe if you Go don't, on. that's a deep cut, isn't it? That's a deep cut. Like I would only get that joke. If I knew that he was a DJ, firstly, which I imagine a lot but of yeah, the audience I mean, it's, do, it's, it's, yeah. but then also like those those two people, it's not like they're in the side men. Well, I so have, I wouldn't. I may have said Steve, Aoki and Alan. But I don't, right, I, yeah, because Steve and Alan, I would have been yeah. like, what the fuck is he talking about? But anyway, and then another one, which is where I was like, gosh darn it, was um, their second course was potatoes oh. uh, of sort. Mm. Um, I went up to JJ with a peeler. And <laughs> I went, are you sure I can trust you with this? He was like, what do you mean? I was like, I know you've not got, I know you've not got a great history with appeal process. With appeal process? What does that mean? Yeah. The, 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 this, this isn't going to well. <laughs> no, but the, I the don't know. That I'm, I'm, yeah, I want, so what does appeal process mean? Like appealing uh, he, a law? He just appealed his boxing decision, which got, uh, didn't get overturned, so he right. still lost his Okay. Fight. See, if I knew that, I would get there. that joke then, because I knew that you meant like appealing something. Yeah. See, so that would be funny if I knew that. So that's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Aww, anyway, anyway. Got that's cut. a shame. You know, we, we live and we learn. <laughs> uh, At the end of the day, the all next. you can do is stuff like that. It's not like you can, you, you can't prepare like too much in advance. Also, I find with stuff like that, it, when people do prepare too much in advance, yeah, it kind of comes off a, cri a bit wooden. I do that with, I used to be like, oh, should I be preparing like a lot? I mean, I do... Uh, like for a Chris video or something normally be like oh, I can think of like a funny you joke you pretty much know there, what you're going to be doing there though don't you you're yeah. kicking balls so like then, you want to say something funny as you kick the ball yeah but then I'm like the ones that I've written down never make the edit because I just it feels weird to whittle something off that's not off the yeah. cuff yeah 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 if definitely. you're like just saying it off it's weird yeah oh that's good though at but least we're still, young at least oi listen if you got told three years ago you'd even be in a side member video that's mm. what you. Are, that's what we said. Do you not remember when we did um, New Year's resolutions? And I said mine is to be more grateful for where I am and realize how far I've come. Do that in that moment, okay? Because, baby, what's, what's mine? three years ago you were irrelevant. Nobody cared about you, including your friends and family. So now you at least have these podcast viewers and listeners. Not me, of course. Yeah. But still, these still people still working on the friends and family. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> But um, everyone else in your life seems to think you're all right. So, yeah, well done. Well done. Yeah, I think it, it was another excuse. It was 2nd or 3rd of Jan. That's not a good time to... Oh, to be creative juices flowing. Yeah. Yeah, people are still chilling. People are still Jesse and just chilling. Um, oh, well, have you heard that we might be going to war and we might be getting drafted into the army? Um, yeah. But I like to think as a TikTok slash YouTube sensation, I'm classed as a key worker. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so. I just this morning, 
um, was at BBC Studios because BBC News have a yeah. podcast. And for whatever ungodly reason, they asked me to come on and talk about being drafted for the war. <laughs> <laughs> And I quickly realized, so it went from a, like, really high up military expert mm-hmm. over to me. Yeah. And um, I realized quite quickly that um, I was maybe being a little bit inappropriate when they were like, what was the first when thing? you were like, oh, I like your car key. <laughs> no, they were like, what was nice the first? Nice <laughs> <laughs> They were like, what was the first thing that popped into your head when you heard the news that it could be a possibility that people would be drafted to go into the war? And I said, what the big fat fuck? <laughs> and I said, will there be any Rennies, first of all? Because I get really bad heartburn and indigestion. And I said, secondly, um, is what? chronic stitch classed as an actual issue that can exempt you from being drafted? And they were like, but what did you really think? And I was like, that. I, I thought that. Um, no, it was it was nice. But um, yeah, how mad. But sorry, I just realized I just said but about 20 times. Hey up, hey! Oh, shit. Um, it's got out of the mind again, guys. Yeah, just to put everybody at ease, after speaking to the official mel- military expert, the chances of it actually happening are very slim. Just so. to take you back off ease, do oh. you think that they would be like, yeah, you're just about to get drafted, so heads up. They're going to keep everybody on the... Oh. on the. They're going to keep it on the download for as long as humanly possible. No, but it's like but, the, the chances of it getting to that point are so slim. They said what is most likely to happen that, that if there was a war, the way it would impact our daily lives are in terms of things like cyber crimes. Just and, dodge a bomb on the way to Yeah, work. just like dodging bullets and stuff. Um, most people, there's some like movie musicals where there are big shootouts happening, but through... Mm the joy of song and dance they actually make the bullets go in slow-mo and like yeah. pirouette around them mm. so maybe those at home think about doing that if that if it comes to that um but yeah, yeah. So just sing at the sing at the front line why do you think that our generation cannot take things seriously to the point where we get told that it's a possibility we may be drafted for war <laughs> and tiktoks are being made like get ready with me for this, a day at war see, <laughs> TikTok and Twitter come alive at these yeah. points in time. Like that's what. But I also think it's because we've been so, like, just I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, we, we've had we've been so. How how? Well, I, I said isolated. I said yes. I yeah. said our. If you think about it, our grandparents, yeah. their parents lived through the war, and raised them with that kind of like strict mentality of you know we don't we don't really have much we made it through the war then the, our grandparents passed that on to our parents maybe less so mm. because things were better but they still had those values inside of them then our parents kind of grew up with hey up our parents grew up with more opportunities than what our grandparents yeah. did in terms of like it was becoming more accessible to go to university and then by the time it gets to us we have everything at our fingertips. We've not experienced war in decades. Yeah. We're in the era of mental health where like in a workplace, we put like people's feelings and thoughts like at the forefront. Whereas for the years before that, that was never the case. Yeah, you can't so, just take like a mental health day when you're when you're at the war, front line, exactly. Um, also, I think technology, mm. because say for example, if every time your car broke down, you couldn't just ring up someone and be like, oh, can you come, like, R-A-C, can you, R-A-C-E over here mm. and come collect me. Mm. You have to know how to change a wheel. You have to know how to, like, get down grubby. Yeah. But not just between the sheets. Oy. Just also all over the, the place. Like, I feel like that <clears throat> will then make, it's not No, it's not I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I mean? like, it's, 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 we've, we've not had to do as much for ourselves as the yeah. past generations have. Sort of delegate it off to different things. Or oh, if I'm confused about something, I don't need to learn about it. I'll just yeah. type into Google. Example A, <clears throat> I, when I came back from Amsterdam and my ceiling was leaking, what did I do? I called my mom. Got a new house. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I was going to Andrew, let's just sell it and buy a flat. Like, let's just sell it and buy a flat that's like a new build somewhere, like in the center where like everything's shiny and new and we won't have these issues. And I, and he was like, Max, let's just call a plumber. I was like, I don't want to. I want to drown in this room and sell this house. Like, it's oh. uh, we are so incapable as a generation. Also, in terms of technology, we're the first generation that grew up being able to research like things. So, yeah. um, even like more emotional things, like where we can see 
different people's experiences in different workforces or in uh, like we have access to things that in the past they would have just been told about via like the media and stuff mm. whereas we can now actively look into stuff and research things ourselves so because of that i don't know there's just so many issues i'm just basically making excuses for the fact that we're all a bunch no, of pussies it's, it's interesting <laughs> as well uh, with the research thing that if you were in the in the world wars of of uh, of old if they were like oh you need to be you're getting drafted they're like yeah sure i'll do anything for the country mm. Whereas now we're people a lot less are like, patriotic. actually, that's corrupt. I've heard this about that. Mm. I do not actually think I align myself with those beliefs. Uh, well, you're fighting for this, and I don't think that's actually correct. Yeah. You're do like... The country, because people are a lot more intelligent now, because they have a lot more resources lot, available more to them, questions, yeah. they can be more critical of like the the people that are in charge of them and things like that. Mm. Like for example, with Boris Johnson and that whole like uh, COVID party scandal, if that happened 30 years ago, we probably never would have found out about it because yeah. that like social media didn't exist. It wouldn't have leaked. And like the, the newspapers would have probably just been paid off and never said anything about it. Whereas nowadays we can find out everything. So it's a crazy world that we live in y'all. Sure is. What do you think would be, if we went to war mm -hmm. and everybody had to be drafted, what do you think the first three TikTok trends would be? I think first one would be um, like, oh my God, we're at war. Of course we do this. Like we're at war. Of course I do my skincare in the trenches. Yeah. Next one. Oh, I need to do that yeah, one. Yeah. Oh. We're at war. Of course I close my eyes when I gun down a innocent man. Oh, okay. God, that got a bit dark. <laughs> um, yeah. Mm. We're at war. Of course I'm camping out at Big Tesco. We're at war. Of course I can't shut my eyes and forget about the atrocities I've seen Oh my that God, day. right. Okay, maybe this is a bit dark. Do you know what? Are we being insensitive? Listen, okay, we're not, we're not trying to... Yeah, we are being insensitive. Okay, we're not trying to be insensitive. We're just making acknowledgement of the fact that Gen Z make fun of everything when it comes to serious topics. I do not think that like the majority of, uh, they told me a statistic this morning. It's like 38% of adults under 40 in the UK said that they would not want to like be um, drafted for war. And I was like, I thought it would be higher than that. Yeah. 38%. But, you know, it's crazy. Sometimes you don't have a choice. War just comes to you. That's a nice point to end <laughs> <there>. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Actually, maybe we're, we're getting a bit dark here. Um, okay, next one. Wait, just one more topic. Fitness legend activities have commenced. <laughs> okay, okay. <clears throat> so, for all of you out there that have, calling me, that have been calling me a whale... Or fat, fat whale, porky, pork whale, uh, like blubber, a, blubber king, yeah, sea lion, big fat fatty, yeah, wobbly um, blobsky, big big Fish old wobblers, man, um, uh, grotesque, vile, yeah, yeah, slimy, okay, gross, yeah, okay, yeah, like a slug, mm -hmm. like a sort of just a fatty deposit, like yeah. a petri dish gone wrong, okay. Uh, is a an only like a, a species that's just sort of cropped up out of nowhere, and you've gone, what's that there for? Like a the body shape of a of a bit of chewing gum you've picked off the bottom of a table. Yeah. Like a a jelly baby been left out in the sun for too long. Uh, yeah. Like a little Victorian boy that's been in a car crash. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, what else did people say? Uh, oh, I like, can't remember. I um, can't remember it right now. Like some a, some dough that's been rising for th like for four years. <laughs> 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 right. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All of those. All of those comments. Yeah, that um, was really mean of you guys yeah. saying that in the comments. Yeah, guys. Why did you do that? Um. Anyway. Um. I have finally put a stop to it. As yes. of yesterday, as of yesterday, Gym Legend is here. Hell yeah. Guys, when I tell you the gym that I have joined is mental. 
I don't want to say what brand it is because at last time I've done that in the past and people have said like come up to me in the gym and be like I'll, I'll listen to you on the podcast said that and I knew that you lived in Clapham so it must have been this gym so then yeah. so yeah um it's a really fancy one it's like a health club right and there's literally like bars and restaurants in the cl- club right okay you know just going to them doesn't mean you're being a fitness legend no but <laughs> right okay Callum just said that so far he's only seen me in a hot tub. Um, if you look at my Instagram story, I was actually running on a treadmill yesterday. Thank you very much. Nice. Um, How far did you run? I don't actually know because when I got it on, when I got on the treadmill, it was, I start, I pressed go and then I, and then it instantly said like six kilometers. And I was like, fucking hell, that was fast. But <laughs> the previous person's uh, d- data was still on there. So that's yeah. why. So And I just, I didn't know how to reset it because I wasn't that familiar so with the machinery. Think, tell you what, I'll add from six to whatever I ended up at. No, thought, because then ah, when I finished and it was on 7.5, it was a bit upsetting really. So I just chose <laughs> to not do that. Um, no, but it has a full spa in it. And when yeah. I say spa, I mean like level to which well, I would milk, pay like- Eggs, cheese. <laughs> uh, no. You got scratch cards in there as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like to the level of what I would pay like 150 to 200 pounds a day to go to. Like it's unreal. Nice outdoor pool that heat that's heated are you taking the piss outdoor hot tubs saunas four steam rooms this place is wild i'm living my best life the biggest gym oh, i've list, ever list been all to all the amenities and how many there are I'm sure people can narrow it down oh god yeah <laughs> <laughs> never mind <laughs> tennis courts multiple they're not not given a number um <laughs> And it's just so fancy, and I, I've it's never been to the biggest pool in <laughs> London. In Europe. Um, <laughs> no, and biggest pool in London. <laughs> all the women have had so much plastic surgery. Roses? I've, it's <laughs> no, not in like the best way, in like the like older kind of mob wifey sort of way. But it's so it's iconic. Like a botched job. A little bit, yeah. Are oh, you fitting well then? Thank you. Uh, what? Shut up. <laughs> uh, but no, and I went for a run. I ran for around half an hour yesterday yeah. which considering i haven't run in six 1K, months was it <laughs> <laughs> i ran it right let's work somebody work this out i ran at speed eight speed eight yes eight what i don't know on the treadmill speed eight that's a jog, that's a jog. do you know what drop and give me 20 bitch what the fuck eight eight it'll probably be eight <laughs> don't please it'll probably be be eight upset. kilometers an hour is it probably well i ran for half an hour so i ran four kilometers fuck fuck go, go on then me I'm a legend. I'm literally sick at this. Um, I defo did not run. Uh, well, about 20 minutes in, I walked. Did, 20 did minutes you, in, did I you did drop walk. the pace yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, massively because I couldn't. I couldn't carry on. But after not How running, how the hell are we trying to work this? You said right, work this out. See what I did. <laughs> <laughs> I you were actually going up and down, <laughs> and the, the pace just stopped. I actually stopped don't walking. know what I did. Yeah. Um, but all because this is hashtag not spawn. But Jim Shark right, sent me. Could you just do that hashtag again? Hashtag not spawn. <laughs> I will put you at this. This is hashtag. <laughs> hashtag not spawn. Um, Jim Shark sent me a PR package, and it yep. changed my life a little bit Thanks because it had. Shark, really nice um, do you not get them? Nope. They only give them to real gym legends, unfortunately. Um, but they literally gave me. Have you seen all these like fitness influencers saying you need to have your greens, and it's like this powder? Yeah. So they gave me one of those, and I was like, first at first, I was like, this is going to be like death, like gross yeah, swamp at juice. First, you're afraid you're petrified. Yeah, but then I realized I can't remember the rest of the words. I wish I did in that moment, but I, I don't. Um, couldn't live without you by my side. Me to the greens. Can I cannot live with you this much thigh? Oh, yes, that was me. That was very yeah. much me. Um, all you do is put a scoop of it in, water, a squeeze of a lemon. Delicious. Who knew? Nutritious. Delicious and nutritious. Honestly, it's so good. Sets me up for my day. Nice. I had, I had, oh my God, pre-workout. Yeah. What in the, what in the heroin? What in the ketamine? Oh, yeah. What no, in the I speed? Think, what I, in the hell? I think I need to up my dosage because I, I, mine doesn't do anything. I anymore. was lit like a Christmas tree. I was literally on fire. My oh, skin was you burning. You must have been shaking all over the place. I was driving to the gym after I'd done it. No exaggeration. Off-roading. I felt like I was in GTA. I was like, oh, see that lamppost? Not anymore. I wanted to mow people down. I, how, I felt invincible. How far is the gym from you? Like five minute drive. Oh, I was going to say, I, 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 I don't know about pre-workout. You can, you can wait till after you've driven to pre-workout. Yeah, but I didn't on this occasion because I, I forgot how, how many igniting times you it is. It? 
once yesterday. <laughs> it's, it's such a funny Wait, I used to take it like have. five years ago. I used to take it when I would work out, but I've obviously not yeah. taken it in so long. And I didn't, I think I did way too much like powder to water ratio. Drank it all in like 0.5 seconds. I was lit. I put Iggy Azalea on the speaker. Nice. Done, odd choice, but I did it. Um, and I was giving it, I'm so fancy. I'm going to kill your mum in this car. Literally, I was Ooh, driving. Kind of a remix. I was probably, <laughs> I was probably driving over the speed limit. I don't know. Don't, anybody out there, don't do it. I was lit. When I got out the car, I was like marching there, running. I was in the um, changing room, like, Put my clothes off, take my... Oh. No wonder you oh, ran God, out of energy by the time you got on their trip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was so good. Like, I was like, oh my God, this is what, like, heroin addicts feel like when they... And again, we're not, like, endorsing go. that. It was sick. I, I've never felt better. I imagine this is what heroin is like. So thanks for the sponsor of this episode. <laughs> no. Dodgy Craig down yeah. the road. No, but it was so mental. My skin was, like, covered in goosebumps. I was itching. All my hairs were standing up. <laughs> I took way too much. Like honestly, I was. It was wild. Um, but yeah, got, what's, got what's, through it. Had a what's great the time. Goal? I would say in the future, pre-workout not needed for a run. <laughs> no, it is. Oh my god, I'm a lazy bastard. I would have done ten minutes if I didn't have that. Honestly, I was. I was listening to. I made a gym playlist. And how embarrassing is this? <laughs> so can I look? Can I? Can you show me? Your I mean, gym yeah, playlist? it's not. It's 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 just like the gayest songs of all time. Right, but brilliant. basically, I posted it. <laughs> I posted. I made it very quickly, so it's not like as right. accurate as put, I will be adding to it. God, put the excuses in already. No, so I just, Fucking I just. It. No, not even just the songs. Have you, have you made the font bigger on your phone? Yes. <laughs> and everybody always, everybody. I show it to people and I forget that it is like that, and people are like, "Are you blind?" And I'm like, "No, I just like it it's big." Like my grand. Oh, <laughs> no, I just like, like the my big grandma's text. Grandma's just giving me her phone. I don't know why. I just like the big text, and I turned it back down to small, and now it. And now it's weird to me. I like it big. Right. Okay. So <laughs> we are one, two, three, four, five, six. This has so seven, much caffeine in it, eight. by the way. I think. Right. Nine songs into this playlist mm. so far, all Britney Spears. <laughs> Guys, who can blame me? <laughs> How Have I you ever tried to go to the gym without Brit? Hot as ice, up and down till it's gone. Now that I found you, <laughs> tick tick boom, toy soldier, <laughs> phonography. That's such a good big song. fat bass. Got. Paper Gangster by Lady Gaga. Banger. Banger. You lot know in the comments. Okay, banger. Keep uh, going. But you, I bet you were lapping this one up, weren't you? What's it Come. <gasps> no, you need to play. <laughs> you need to play that. This is a song um, by an artist called Brooke Candy with Iggy Azalea in it. Oh, will it get? Yeah. Right, I'll just read you the words. Oh, yeah, I'll just read you the words. Is it? Not on the... You, is there oh, is it? lyrics on there? Can Maybe, you? actually, yeah. Swipe up, swipe up, and you read them out. Yeah, how do you find the lyrics on... Spotify? Pass it here. Oh, my God, this is so brilliant. Okay. Oh, wait, no, I found them. Right, okay. Right, you need to... I want you to read out the lyrics. Right, so <laughs> just just an idea of... Max is in the gym on the, on the treadmill, running along after shooting out the stupid amount of pre-workout, <laughs> and in his ear, he's just got... Um, <laughs> Make me come. Give it to me raw right now, right now. <laughs> Seesaw up, down, up, down. Give it to me wrong way round. Cowgirl, yeehaw. Ho down right now. Trigger finger, pop downtown. Standoff style cowboy showdown now. Super soak, you might drown. Bow down, hold my crown, it's your time now. Make me come, make me squirt. See my titties through my shirt. Get me off, get me wet. Push my pussy to the edge. <laughs> make me come, make me squirt. See, I assume that. And then it, after that, it just goes, make me come, 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 make me. That is crazy that you listen to that in the gym. <laughs> if, if you're a mid set listener, surely you just giggled yourself. <sighs> right. Let oh, me then we got, we got three RuPaul's. <laughs> Three more Britney Spears. <laughs> <laughs> and then just two random songs that I assume were just uh, suggested to you. I think so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. RuPaul, Britney Spears, Come and Lady Gaga. Right, so the song, Come. 
is called is is by an artist called Brooke Candy that supported Charlie XCX one time when I saw Charlie XCX live, and I heard the song and I didn't really know what the lyrics were. I was just like, oh, this is like a bop, and then I realized afterwards that Iggy Azalea was in it, and I was like, yeah. oh, I like Iggy Azalea. This is a lot of caffeine in it. I'm finding out. I feel lit a little bit, not as lit as I was yesterday. However, yeah, <laughs> I listened to that, and I am now realizing once it's been you know said out loud that that is very intense lyrical yeah lyrical madness um but, but you know. i bet you were there thinking you're like a little boss bitch on the treadmill oh, just like yeah trying to power through. oh absolutely <laughs> but the funny thing is when i posted so somebody was like what is your gym playlist and i was like oh i've just made this one as you can see it's all britney spears put a screenshot of it on um instagram people then searched my name on spotify and i got loads of messages like your playlists are so weird and i was like what i had no idea that people could see my playlist like at all let me read out some of like the the um, playlists that I've got. Um, so one's just called Reading Fest. That's not that bad. Wait, let Call me you find crazy some cat. Um, I've got one that's called Skiing that just has all my like calming songs on that I listen to when I'm just skiing. Just a calming sc- song. One that's called ski. Blue Tears um, and has a teardrop emoji. One that's called Big Fat Barcy and I listened to that when I was in Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> one that's called <laughs> pussy juice truffle butter <laughs> what why because <laughs> during covid um me and when i was at uni me and my friends turned each room in our house into a different club and then we had to come up with a club name and me and my friend claudia turned our room my room into a club called pussy juice truffle butter i don't really know why but that happened nice. um one called grooving and shaking one called Sp- <laughs> Sp- <laughs> spooky cauldron bubble death and it's got loads of like <laughs> What is wrong with you? <laughs> One's called. It doesn't matter how long I know you. Like... <laughs> One's called Valentine's Paella Vibes. <laughs> what does that mean? Because I ate a paella on Valentine's Day one time with this boy that I was speaking you know to, and I made a right playlist. Now? You sound like an indie artist explaining <laughs> like the, the names meaning of, of their, their lyrics, <laughs> like the names of their songs. <laughs> yeah, one's called L'Oreal Baby, and it was when I got my job at L'Oreal, and I just listened to all these songs. Yeah, very bizarre. Um, one's just my friend's name and I would put it on when she was in the car with me yeah weird vibes uh, one's called pots and pans because the songs all sound like they have pots and pans in it I don't know what sorry what mood would you need do you ever just go oh I quite fancy some pots and pans yes that's quite gym vibes actually like what? Jimmy I would say that that song come would be in pots and pans category right okay. it's like bang 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 well, it's a different type of bang. Yeah, it is. Um, anyway, shall we do do- our job? Yeah. I just I just think that we should. You know, I've, we've embarked so much wisdom on Shut everyone. Shut um, Right, okay. I'm just going to send an email that I've received from head office to print. Ooh. As far as I'm concerned, this is the head office. Eh? With what we get up to. Also, I cleaned your computer a little bit. So you're welcome would be nice. You're I welcome. mean, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. A thank you would be nice because the comments kept saying that the, we need to well, clean your thing. Well, still fucked. Yeah, I didn't clean it that well, but I cleaned it a little Look at bit. the side of yours. Right, okay. I couldn't get it out of those tight spots. I could right. get out of those tight little holes. Dear Queef Executive Director and Proper Fitty, thank you for using our official titles. I have a proper dilemma. Proper. George. As the straight half of the podcast, I would like your advice. Nice. I, a girl, like this boy, and he likes me back. But I'm a bit hesitant to be in a relationship with him. I am bi, and I've heard that this can be a bit of a turn-off or make their partner a little bit uncomfortable. How would you feel if you had a girlfriend and she came out as bi? Would this change the way you feel about her? Love the podcast. P.S. Max, you have amazing hair and teeth. You're a proper fitty. Wow. I like that a lot. Thank you. Thank you. What are you thinking? Um, impossible. Oh, you have a girlfriend? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that I go anywhere near anyone who's... No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I would... It, how would you feel if like you were with them and then like a year afterwards oh, they were like, oh, I've discovered that I, I'm bi? Hmm. I... Because how do you come to that conclusion? While I don't with... know. Yeah, I, th- I feel like it's a slightly different scenario if you go into the relationship they're like i'm bi but yeah okay 
just means I'm better than even more people. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> um, but then if, if you're mid relationship and they're basically just gone like, it, like I mean, I, I feel like they, it, it's it's different. Obviously, you could be you'll be coming to terms with it before, but say they've really... suddenly had the epiphany like, holy shit, I'm bi, then I'll be like. How did you that's, come to that conclusion yeah, whilst you were like, with oh, me? Oh, that's 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 great that you can. Uh, my tits got that big. To, <laughs> like you got the confidence to tell me that. Mm. But also, who the fuck is this bitch? If it's like, okay? yeah, who, who's this bitch you've been thinking yeah. of? Yeah. Um, I would say it's not breakup territory. Because mm. like that's it is it is just them discovering a part of them. But I I would I would I'd feel like it's not overstepping the mark to be like that's brilliant and stuff and then I want to settle for a while I'll be like ask the, questions by the way love how did you come to that mm, scenario and yeah. it's like oh I was just like poking some girl over the weekend mm. and you be like oh okay yeah yeah um, I think but, as long as if, if someone's she, open and honest about it with yeah. you from the start seemingly from this dilemma she knows that she's bi yeah. just walk into it like that like you said if anything it's almost a bigger compliment because it's like I've assessed every single person in my life yeah other than possibly family, and I choose to be with you, or yeah. I choose to like you. Everybody's an option, and yeah. you're the one I chose. Yeah, that's, that's such a, a good way, way to look to, at it. That is uh, a good way to yeah. look at it. When I met Andrew, he told me, so obviously we matched on like Hinge and everything, yeah. and he came out like a lot later than I did. I think he was like 21, 22, and he um, had only ever had one boyfriend before me, and he like kind of came to terms with it all a lot later, that he was gay and then, but also kind of like, he, he still would be with girls every now and again, uh, not once he came out, but like he says that like, you know, he, he, he is attracted to like some girls every now and again, but like, yeah. it's not, I, I think if we view sexuality as more of like on a spectrum for some people, like for most people, it's like, oh, I am this or I am this, like, and that's just how they feel. But for some people, it's just a bit, you know, in the middle. Yeah. Um, and yeah, when Andrew told me that, I wasn't like, oh my God. If anything, I was like, oh my God, so you're choosing me like out of everyone. Like I'd say he, he described it as like, he's like 10% like could be with a girl, but he'd, al he'd always pick a boy over it and everything. And I was yeah. like, that's nice to know that even if the, that 10% was at play, you're choosing me. Yeah, I guess you can still, when in a relationship, look at people and be like, subjectively or even oh, yeah. objectively i find that person attractive. i do that all the time objectively i'm gonna sleep with that person behind my boyfriend's <laughs> back what's wrong with that like it's but 2024 like, yeah if they just start doing that more and more with people of the same sex mm. then i guess well, oh I, I might be bi but yeah. i'm not gonna act on anything because yeah. i'm in love with you exactly but that's not even the dilemma Dilemma, yeah. dilemma's easy. Yeah, just, just tell him. Just because somebody <laughs> is bi, it doesn't mean that they're more or less likely to cheat on someone. Yeah. Uh, cheating is still a thing. Like, you fall in love with someone, you're with them. You you can be anything. And, like, straight people cheat all the time. Gay people cheat all the time. Mm. Baby, we're all cheaters at heart. Except not me. Because I'm a nice person. Right. Um, have we, is the phone ringing? Oh, my God. It's so weird that I looked to my keyboard. But the phone... George, would you... Oh my god, yeah. Your ear brigade's just started ringing. Thank you, George. You really got that, got that in there? Hi, Max and George. Hi. So, my coworker recently got engaged and asked me to be in her wedding, and I was very yeah. happy for her, so I said, yes, I'd love to. I've never met her now fiancé before, so I was asking her questions like, what's his name? Where's he from? I asked what he does for work, and she said, oh, nothing right now, because he just got back from jail. <laughs> she immediately started to say it was much? nothing bad and just kind of carried on with the conversation. When I got home, I looked him up and he was charged with sexual assault on a minor in a completely different state. I found out he did go to jail and then was put on parole where he proceeded to cut his ankle monitor off and then fled 14 hours to my state where he met my coworker. I also found out that he has a whole other family that he just kind of upped and left. After a year of being gone, he's finally out of jail and living with my now newly engaged coworker. After knowing all that, I don't know if I really want to be in this wedding anymore and or attached to it at all, and my coworkers keep making fun of me for it. So, my question is, how do I tell her I don't want to be in her wedding anymore and or which one of you wants me my plus one? Thanks! Wow. wow. Sounds like the speech just writes itself now. Yeah. You found the information you need, just go for it. Write it all down. I mean... I I'm just confused it... how he managed to assault a minor from a completely different state that's 
incredible <laughs> reach. Oh no. my oh. god, that's <laughs> awful. That is awful. Um, I think I think I find it so bizarre when people get with not like you know let's let's think about like criminals as a okay. whole. There are so many different types of crimes. Top five criminals, go. Top five criminals. Uh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Top five crimes. Um, um, I think I, w- <laughs> I would struggle and I w- to be with, and I would judge a friend if they got with somebody that was doing sexual assault on people, especially children. Yeah. I find that very bizarre, um, oh, and I take. think, yeah, <laughs> no, but I find it odd that, like, I just can't imagine ever wanting to be in a relationship but with somebody. Are you, are you sure that's... you want this going on the podcast? <laughs> People do watch this, you know, you just <laughs> come out these Hot outlandish, outlandish I know, beliefs. Sorry. Yeah, what do you think? I don't know. I think, I think oh, you're I well personally within... fought all for it. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're well within your rights to say, do you know what? I found this out, and... They're also only co-workers, so, like, you can't really be that close. Like, I mean, we're co-workers, and I don't even know his middle name. Yeah. Um, Do you have a middle name? You don't, do you? Yeah. Is it Andrew? Shut up. You are getting... uh, The the lines are blurring real real quickly What is it? Is it Andrew? I remember you telling it to me. Is it your granddad's name? Is it, like, Christopher or something? My great-granddad's name. Yeah. Oh, I can't remember. It's your great-granddad's name who won... And uh, and in the in the Olympic shooting somehow, Commonwealth Games shooting. Commonwealth Games. Oh fuck me! Right. Um, oh my god, I cannot remember his name. But based on how posh you are, I'm gonna say like John T. <laughs> no. No, Philip. No. It's something like that, though, isn't it? No. Is it like an? Is it a more different name than an usual name, or is it quite a common name? Uh, for like an older two. gentleman. Between the two, that helps me in no way. What's it? Right, that's, John. No, that's that's too basic. Okay. Yeah. Paul? No. Paul wasn't really that big back then, was he? Um, oh, I really, really do not know. I really don't know. Go on. Do you not even have half a clue? Arthur! <laughs> it is, isn't it? Oh, my God. Yes, because I remember saying it's so weird that now two of your best mates are called Arthur. Mm. Wow. Uh, the three Arthurs. How the hell did you even get that in the end? That's crazy. I know, that that's crazy. I'm so clever. I am clever. <clears throat> yeah, do you know what? That is kind of between the two as well. Yeah. You were right. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. What advice do you have for this honourable person? Um, I say... Uh, like, yeah, if you don't want anything to do with that person's wedding, then just get your little ass out of there. Because yeah. if um, you had to do research to find out the person's name... And mm. clearly you aren't that close to the co-worker. Yeah. And it, as much as it's like a nice thing and you'd want to be like, oh, yeah, I'll do that for you. As soon as you find out the the person has performed sexual assault. Yeah. Cut the ankle monitor off and fled. Mm. Then it's like, well, you've, you've <coughs> made your bed, mate. Yeah. Lie in it. Oh, God. Not Maybe don't. their bed. No. Yeah, I agree. And I think, do you know what? I have very low tolerance when it comes to weddings as well. I think that so many people who have weddings think that because it's their special day, it has to be your special day as well and everybody has to be on board. Sometimes your wedding is an inconvenience to my life. Hmm. Sometimes I don't want to I don't want to travel all that way. Do you know what I mean? Like and bear in mind, uh, I went to two weddings last year. Both of, one was my sisters and one was my stepsisters. Had an amazing time at both of them. Um and then I got, wait, no, I went to three weddings last year, actually. Oh. And they were all, like, amazing, and I had Flex. the best time. But then I, I, I hear from my older sister, who is, is now at the age where, like, all of her friends are getting married. And it's like, she, she went to something like seven weddings in a year. And some of them were in, like, Canada and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, my God, if my life gets to that point, I will not be happy. Well, if my, if my, life, gets, my life gets to the point where I have to celebrate all the time i don't want to celebrate go on holiday <laughs> oh but then actually that's quite selfish because when it comes to my wedding i'm going to expect everyone to celebrate yeah you will i will i will do that so do you know what i take back what i just said and any weddings out there feel free to invite me that's what i'm that's what i'm saying there um uh i've just had another email through have you yeah i actually I have so. emails these days it's all it's all me i do all the work around here Baby. 
Meep moop, meep moop, meep You've got a passion fruit drink in it. I know that. <clears throat> Hi, Max and Greg. Oh, I guess I don't get to read it then. Oh, sorry. Wow. Go on, Greg. <laughs> Loser. Hi, Max and Greg. <laughs> Hope you're well. I'm currently in year 13 doing my A levels, and it's so freaking hard. Oh. Language. Yeah, you're still at school. Mm. Why is there so much content to learn? Mm. How did you manage your A levels? And any advice for a stressed student? Thank you and love the pod. See you at your Leeds show. Oh, yay. <laughs> Come to our tour. Um, well,. A levels are solid. I'm not gonna lie. Do you remember A levels? Um, yes. Did you do A levels or did you do a B tech? I did A levels. Did you not do any B tech? Yes. Yeah, see, I knew you did. Did B tech sport, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, you one of them pricks. I've got so much coursework to do. I need to run around a field. No, we actually shut did up. A thing. Uh, we did. Shut uh, up. Just carry on. Oh, shut up. I've got some. <laughs> I got some homework to do. <laughs> uh, no, they um. We did a thing called Deadline Day Challenge. What's that? Where you don't start the coursework until deadline day and you have to try and complete it in the lesson. <laughs> That's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. <laughs> but it was an intense lesson. <laughs> like the, the, what, the, the teachers did this? Uh, no, they, they, were, they were present, but they right, were just okay. like, I mean, they, it's your, it's yeah. your funeral. Uh, so Jeez. for the first like two weeks or something, we're just like chill and the computers <laughs> and like because it was pretty much my whole friendship group mm. and then just like two or three other people who we like got on with uh and then we were yeah we just one of the one of the uh coursework bits was so small that we were like i reckon we could fit this into a day if we really go hard so the, the like That's weeks hell. building up we're just like loud chatting like everything and then the one lesson everybody's complete silent everyone's got their headphones oh, in and just like <laughs> I hated that. There was some... I think when it comes to A-levels, some are much harder than others. Yeah. And some, like, for example, not going to lie, my sociology exams, I didn't revise until the morning of for a full A-level exam, Much which respect. is not the best, like, method. What is sociology? Just being social? No, it's just, about, like, just social... Go in and just, is, it, is it, like, French-speaking exam, but it's just in English? Yeah, literally. <laughs> Hello, no, Max. <laughs> Hello. What did you get up to this weekend? <laughs> no, it's about society. It's all, like, society's norms, values, all the institutions within society, like school, healthcare, religion, everything. Um, but the thing about sociology is that if you know the basics and you know the basic theorists, like Marxists or the other basic theorists <laughs> that I've <laughs> forgotten, um, you can literally just blag it. So yeah. on the morning of my exam, I wrote down like five really important quotes from these big theorists and then just worked out different ways that I could apply them. But do you know my sociology A-level exam is the one that I overdosed on um, hay fever medication and had to be wheeled out in a wheelchair. So I found them very, <laughs> very difficult. Then, I I hear these stories and <laughs> I wonder how I've forgotten about hearing them the first time. <laughs> it uh, was wild. It was wild. My world came crumbling down. I, The night before, my hay fever was so bad that I took a pill. And then morning after, took another pill. All of these are one a day pills, by the way, like one per 24 hours. Um, basically, leading up to the exam, my sneezing would not stop. And I was like, I cannot be in, in the exam, sneezing, mm. blowing my nose, everything, eyes all swollen. So I ended up taking five pills. And then cut to sitting in the exam. I've got all my theorists memorized in my head. I'm writing it down. And do you know that scene of Will from the Inbetweeners yeah. when he shits? Literally, I, I shit you not, <laughs> pun, I was that. That was me. I raised my hand and I, all the words were spiraling all around me. I felt like really dizzy. I raised my hand and I was like, bear in mind these exam invigilators are like past students who do not give a shit. I was yeah. like to this boy who was like in the year above me who had just left. I was like, I don't know what's happening, but I don't feel okay. And I think I need help. And he was like, okay, I'm going to go and get someone. Goes to get the head invigilator who happens to be my primary school reception teacher who I'd not seen since then and she's like Max oh my god is that and she's like are you okay I had to be 
taken out, like I'm, I'm there walking. Everybody is looking at me because I'm sat at the front of the hall huh? because I get extra time because I have shaky hands. <laughs> Everybody's watching me be carried <laughs> out. <laughs> is that the, is, how much extra time do you get just because your hands shake? Oh, George, I, I ruined the system. Do you want to hear this? I got 25% extra time, laptop use, all my exams I typed, I didn't even write, and rest breaks. Do you know what a rest break is, my friend? Put my hand up. Miss, I need a rest break. My time stops. I can sit there for as long as I want. I can go on a walk outside. What? My time has stopped. I wrecked the system. Nobody sue me. I don't think they can sue me. I don't think they can take my qualifications away. I they don't know how... Me. I haven't got any. How the hell did you still leave with those grades? Uh, bear in mind... <laughs> yeah. Bear in mind, GCSE maths... You don't even need to write a lot. My hands shake, so I write really slowly. And yeah. my hands would cramp up because it would take a lot for me to write. So they gave me laptop use and extra time and rest breaks through, through the years. And it would apply to all exams. So when I did my GCSE maths, which requires like no writing, obviously, it's all brain. I would read a question and be like, oh, I think I know that. But like, just let me have a rest break and think about it. Sit there, staring at the question, going, right, how do I work that one out? Right, I'm ready. Write the, write Wait, the answer so down. You can still look at the thing while you I think they make you close your paper, but, like, you, you can still you still remember what it was. So, like, remember the general thing that you Is there a at. limit on amount of rest breaks? No. I would sometimes so be there. You just be after every question and just be like, yep. rest. I would sometimes be there for, like, a full hour after everybody else had left because I was building up my time that I'd accumulated through all my rest breaks. <laughs> It was wild. This Surely one girl. Limit. You can't make make a this one poor girl... invigilator have to stay until like <laughs> one a.m. No. So when I when I passed out and they had to wheel me out, they had to put me outside in a wheelchair um, because I couldn't be in like the halls or around anybody that could come and tell me answers or like they could I could have huh? written something on the wall and everything. So <laughs> I had to be faced against like just this field outside in a wheelchair. And then they came and told me, they were like, Max, like... <laughs> like a retirement home. Yeah, honestly. They came and told me, they were like, right, Max, you need to come back in now because it's been an hour. And I was like, how has it been an hour? I've just been sat in my head. I've been there for like five minutes. Then I like, I'm there down, head down, because they made me shut my eyes and put my head down so that I couldn't look at anything. They wheeled me through the school. Uh. Didn't tell me where I was going. Open my eyes. There's blood everywhere. All over the floor, all around me. I'm starting to panic thinking, oh my God, this is my blood. Like, what's happened? Turns out a year seven kid had fallen and cracked his head open. So they called an ambulance. <laughs> Turns out a year seven kid has fallen in front of my wheelchair. <laughs> and I, I went straight him right. <laughs> <laughs> No, he'd cracked his head open. An ambulance came. So whilst the ambulance was there, they brought me to where the ambulance was to also check on me. And they basically did a blood test, so like a little prick thing. And they were like, yeah, he's like got loads <laughs> of antihistamine. Nice they, <laughs> they were like, yeah, he's got loads of antihistamine in his system. So I had to go and sit in the head teacher's office with just me and her um, until about like five o'clock. And then uh, she just fed me like biscuits and stuff to like bring my sugar levels back to normal. <laughs> and then um, she was like, right, you can continue to write the paper now. And I got an A. Oh, was this GCSE? A level. Oh. This is my A level sociology exam. <laughs> Damn. Wild times happen in sociology. When did the exam start? Like, I think they either started at like nine or one, didn't they? <laughs> so I didn't finish it until about like 7 p.m. and it started at one. <laughs> I think it, they, yeah, they always started at like 1.30 or something, didn't they? Or like 9.30, I, I swear. Um, so yeah, my mum had to come and kick, pick me up from school because I couldn't drive home. Fun fact of the day, y'all. I always wonder how they uh, can guarantee that a school isn't just cheating. I know. How a school can't just be like, right, these ones are the ones that are supposed to get the good grades. We'll make sure that they do get the good grades mm. and nobody will question a bloody thing. Yeah. Because it's, I mean, it's, it's all in-house. Like done, but don't it? aren't the ex the exam invigilators that come in work for the exam oh, board? I'm they sure don't they work for the off. school. Yeah, true, actually. Oh my God, yeah, why aren't we doing... Do you know, one of my... Um, some of my A-level exams, because I had extra time and rest breaks and everything, they didn't put me in the main hall with everybody else. They put me in this separate, like, building with just, like, three other students in a room and one person. This woman would be sat at the front on her phone, just, like, texting. And these two other people that were in the thing with me were openly cheating. Like, I saw them, like 
getting out like notes, reading them under the desk. And I was like, obviously terrified because back then they make you think yeah. like if you cheat on your exams, you're getting arrested and everything. And they were like on their phone. I would see them on their phone all the time. Wild times, but I never, I never ever cheated in an exam. Unless- Did you, did you have any friends that did? No, well, the, well, no, there was this one girl who, oh my God, iconic. This girl who was called, I don't want to say her name actually, but um, she basically wore a hijab and she told me that she recorded vo on voice note her like revision notes, just playing oh, over just... and over and just had headphones in throughout That's her exam. So How iconic is that? Like, and just had her headphones like wired into a thing. Like, but I just kept thinking, oh my God, like imagine if there was ever a fault with the headphones or something and it played out of the actual phone, like your life's over, but obviously yeah. it was worth the risk for her. She was living on the edge. This is completely not related at all, but for some reason you say, I'm saying, oh, I can remember this girl, I'm not gonna say her name, reminded me of it. There was a girl called Darina, oh. who was blind. Ah. And we were like best mates at school, at mm. primary school. Mm. And uh, she was, she obviously, well, not obviously, not all blind people can read Braille. I didn't realize mm. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot yeah, of blind, blind people can't read Braille. Mm. Um, and yeah, she used to like, read Braille and stuff all the time. And then um, one, uh, I think it was uh, reading time or something. She was getting a little bit handsy. I was mm. like, Darina, get off the knee. What are you doing, love? Did she think that your cock was Braille? She thought my scab was Braille. <gasps> Well, I don't think she thought that. Did yeah. I just start picking my scab off? I was like, D hey, no. <laughs> Come on now. Started bleeding. And I was like, oh, this friendship's over. That is wild. That is wild. Yeah, yeah because she, surely. She could see what she was doing. She didn't know what she was picking up. Could have, <laughs> could have been a little bit of like mud off my shoe yeah. or something. I mean, I guess. Sort of doing a favour. Oh, you've got something nasty in your arm there, George. Yeah, you could accidentally, like, mistake some things as Braille, I guess. I don't think she thought it was Braille. Was she, just, she was she just getting a bit like, oh, I like your tattoo, George. What is it of? <laughs> don't you dare call me that. And then just like <laughs> scratches it off. She was just taking advantage mm. of you a little bit. Mm, fair enough. Wow. And I saw on the, the Harvester. Oh. Like would you... Six or seven years later. Would you ever go to a high school reunion? Um, yeah. But I think... Way too early for that now, isn't it? Way too early. Yeah. I left high school. Oh, wait, I was going to say, I was going to say 10 years ago. That's absolutely not true. It was like six yeah. years ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, I left in 2017. So what's that? Seven years ago? Yeah, that's still way too early. That is it's... quite early. I, you typically would do a 10 year reunion, wouldn't you? Yeah. And I, I would think be I interested would. then. It would to be see... interesting. Who's gone where? Who's bold? Bold's a big, what? Bold's a big bold, one. Bold, bold. Yeah, who's bold? No, who's just bold? Who's who's walking in there like big, strong? Really sure of themselves? Yeah. yeah. Who's put on weight? Who's a little chubby chubster oh, now? Me. Not that there's me. anything wrong with it. No, but me. Chubby chubsters, but I'm going to point you out if you are one. But do you know what? <laughs> like when I um when I, when I went home for Christmas, I actively was like oh my God, if I like go out or like see anybody, they're going to be like, oh, that's Max from high school and now he's a porker. Oh, so that's that's what also what's encouraging my oh, yeah, fitness like that, that's good because you've you've been keeping such a low profile yeah since i'm very discreet school, <laughs> that they'll have no idea if you nobody would have weight, seen lost yeah, weight, of course had any awful haircuts mm. throughout the time i do think what on earth do people from high school think of me now i, I think this as well what the hell do they think of max beleg <laughs> but they must be so conf Proud. i think a lot of <laughs> 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 no but i think some people will be like what the fuck? Because I think when we live in London and like we operate like in this industry, mm. we kind of take it for granted how bizarre it is to be in this position. Yeah. So if somebody else was from like my school and they were doing this, I'd be like, what the hell? That's mad that they, they ended up doing that. It's so bizarre. If you go to my school or if you went to my school and you watch this podcast, comment down below. I'm very keen to, to hear. My uh, friend, mm. when... He, uh, oh, I like sorry, he's, he's got a weird name. Yeah, uh, he um, went back to do like a placement year at our school because, like, after uni, like, you know, you do oh, yeah, you said. for teaching. Yeah, because you said he went into the staff room and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he was like, the kids used to come up to him and they're like, oh, were you in George Clark's year? That's and mental. Then, and then he was like, yeah, he's like one of my best mates. 
Uh, oh, that's, that's really cool. It is, that's crazy. <laughs> and it might, uh, 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 so weird. That is that weird. is unbelievably that's weird. So weird. Yeah, like my little sister, because obviously she goes to the high school that I used to go to. Yeah. And she says it to me like nobody gives a shit like at all. <laughs> but then I've heard like her friends like on the phone be like, "Is your brother in?" Like, oh my god, like such a body was saying this about him at school. And then every now and again she'll be like. You got brought up in my class today. Like one of my teachers spoke about you because like they used to teach you and all this. And I'm like, that is so mental yeah. that like shit like that happens. Because you should forget people God. that you've met in passing who you still are aware of. Are yeah. Like, yeah. You just crawl up on their phone Like if I went to then? my school gates, I'd probably get beat up, um, first of all. <laughs> but like, and I just like picked my little sister up from school. She would be so mortified. Oh my God, I should so do that. She's in sixth form as well. Why have I never done that? Do I it. need to go and pick her up from sick form one day and record it. No, that's probably illegal. No, no, no. <laughs> 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 Callum's like, oh yeah, yeah record, record the sick form, record it. Oh god, get it. I'm not allowed near schools anymore. Get a video for me. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, that is so mad. Oh my gosh, what happened to me? Oh, um, somebody sent me a message and they were like. Apparently, you were in this uni accommodation in Newcastle, and I'm in the exact flat and room that you were in. And I was like, what? So I opened the message. It was the exact flat and, like, room that I was in four, four or five years ago when I was at Newcastle. Bear in mind, my own friends didn't even remember what flat number I was in. How was yeah. that? I had no followers for, like, three years until after that. How was that information passed oh, out? Wanna, How was that happen? I want to find my old thing and see if I, anybody... Oh my god, yeah, call it out. Yeah. I all right, anybody in Newcastle, if you remember, I had a full saga with my landlord where she accused me of staining my mattress and I didn't. So I went back and forth with her, went back and forth with her for six months, got the police involved, um, and eventually won the forty five pound charge that she tried to charge me. And in that house, I lived at 99 Fern Avenue in Jesmond in Newcastle. If you know anybody that lives there, I was the first bedroom <laughs> on the floor, on the on the ground floor. Um, I, I brought so many boys back to that bedroom. <laughs> and I actually realized after, how bad is this? After going back and forth um, with my back, landlord. Going back and forth? Oh. I with my that. landlord um, about like the stained mattress. After I won... About a year later, me and my friends were reminiscing on like uni times and they were like, Max, do you remember that boy that wet wet the bed in your bed? And I was like, yeah, oh my God, that was so bad. And I was like, that must have been the stain. A boy pissed in my bed. Oh man! I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I know, I know. But I still won the 45 quid. You wouldn't. You wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for that. I literally wouldn't. If it wasn't if for If that you. boy did not piss in my bed. That's crazy. Bear in mind, I woke up to him urinating onto me. I lifted the cover. I lifted the cover as in to go, why is it like wet? I, I feel wet. Penis literally we weeing onto my body. How crazy is the butterfly effect? That if that? you didn't wake up to a boy <laughs> pissing on you, you potentially <laughs> could not be where you are in your life right now. That is crazy. I definitely wouldn't have been. I 100% would not have done TikTok. That is the thing that blew me up on that TikTok for the so first time. so mental. That is so wild. <laughs> Thank you to that boy out there for who pissing pissed on, on me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, my first year accommodation was to Davies House, Rowancroft. Mm. Where? Though? Exeter. Exeter Uni. Okay. Yeah. On the on the St. Luke's campus. Ah. Just us just us medics and sports scientists. Oh there. my god, that sounds like the worst group of people. Um mine was flat ninety three, I believe, Liberty Plaza in Newcastle. Anybody out there? I was gonna say let that. me know. I think I was flat room C, flat ninety three in Liberty Plaza. I think that's where I was. So if you go to Newcastle Uni and you are there, that's where I that's where I lived for a full year. I was gonna say. Oh yeah, I went to a charity uh, MMA fight. The oh. Other, the other week because my that's mate was doing it. Male wrestling. Yeah, male on male. On um, male uh, acrobatics. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Aerodynamic. <laughs> um, and my mate was fighting, and I was just walking around there, um, and <laughs> a few people recognised me. Of course. Um, but one came up, and he was like, "He's like, oh, I used to go to the same school as you." And I was like, "Oh, did you?" And he's like, 
yeah i've literally like just left you were um when i was in year seven we got buddied up oh well, like when there's like a year 11 and a year seven yeah so i think oh. i was like six or we like year 11 yeah, or something yeah. And oh, that's sweet. like if he needed someone, he'd come to me. Oh, did you help him? Uh, yeah, he just got him fine. <laughs> uh, no, he was, yeah, it was, it was quite, quite that is wild, quite cute. Oh, I was like, please. that's so crazy. That's such a weird anybody who went to mine and George's schools or girls, please comment. I'm so interested to hear this because I find it's, I feel like I live in this world where I don't think anybody from where I'm from gives a shit about me. Do you know why I might be on like bus stops in my in Darwin? I'm. I think I could be on what from when you went missing. No, I'm doing like <laughs> this. No, I'm doing this like um like this like local magazine asked me to do an interview. My mum's friends with yeah, the person who owns driver. it. <laughs> <laughs> my mum's friends with the person who owns it, and I typically don't do like interviews for like magazines and stuff. But because it's like a Darwin thing, I was like, right, fine. Um, and then she told my mum, she was like, yeah, like if he does it, we're, we might make it a really big campaign and put him in all the bus stops. Yeah. And I was like, that is fucking hilarious. <laughs> like the fact that I could be at the same bus stop that I used to wait at to go to school is wild. Yeah, I, what was I going to say? I, I think, well, when I was there, they took ages to um, redo all of the displays. Or like, Oh yeah, you said you're still on I, one, I, well, when I when I was, I mean, it's been ages since I've left, so I wouldn't know. Five years. But five years. Six years. You're 24 now. Yeah. Yeah, you would have left when you're 18, so six years. Yeah, I was. It's quite funny just to think that. That is e wild. Even even without everything else happening, it'd be quite funny to think you're just still on a school. They display. show my they show my photography work. To the people do you know when you do like a gcse option choosing evening where you like yeah. go around the different classrooms and they say they show my photography work of me throwing colored paint at my little sister's <laughs> face when she was like eight years old um on the displays and very my my sister was going around picking her things and it was her uh -huh. from like five years ago on the screen and yeah so bizarre i want to know are there any stories about us are people like Oh yeah, Max I was think you're awful. Heavily main character in this now. <laughs> oh my god, I'm just excited by <laughs> it. Have they named any stairwells after <laughs> us? Uh, would you go if like your school was like, we want you to come and like do a talk? Would you go and do a talk? What would I talk about? I don't know. How to become a YouTuber? <laughs> <laughs> Unrealistic life goals. We want to put them on our ch children. Here's something that I um, think is quite an interesting point about i think chris raised it to me the other day we were all speaking like about i think speaking of, no yeah we we were like oh um if everybody lost all of their followers and subscribers mm -hmm. and the money that they'd gained from it and they were just them now not a team people don't know who they are who would grow to be the most successful because oh. and then because it all stemmed from what a lot of people say when they do this, when they do these like little speeches or like write books and stuff, and they're like, "Oh, this is how to be successful," and this is what I did. This is like a full approach strategy. Sort of like everybody that's successful seems to forget the fact that it is very much luck based. Oh as well. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Being lucky enough to be in that right place, place, right time, where that person bought your first thing, or like, like this. So like, for example, like the our videos are the ones that randomly popped off. Mm. If we if those hadn't happened we wouldn't have even started. So for us yeah. to then be like, oh, you just got to try and be you and like- Definitely. So, I always describe it as it's a it's a big like stroke of luck and then it's what you do with that luck. Yeah. Like I've seen people that have had like so much luck and they blow up so quickly and so like massively and then they don't do the correct things afterwards and then they just kind of like peter off yeah. like very quickly. Um, so yeah that's how i describe it and it's stupid to not acknowledge that i feel because yeah. it's not all strategy like it's not like do you think when arthur tv was like what doing whatever like wh what did he used to do what did he say he used to do what was it the channel one of the channels he had that oh, was like yeah, hilarious he oh yeah he does he, yeah he's got like so many different YouTube channels. yeah got, like, one, what arthur was one TV, of them now Minecraft, arthur TV. there was one that was like the most bizarre thing i've ever heard though it wasn't true crime was it he no. does do true he does he has done true well crime, do, but, like, but like do you think when he made his first ever youtube video like this is going to be my career or was he doing it because it was fun and then like it like by a stroke of luck or by like 
you know, whatever was being pushed on the algorithm that day or whatever, yeah. it kind of got seen and then you kind of carry on. Also, many people are not in a position where they have the time to make fun social media content yeah. in their daily life because they're working, because they're like studying everything. So, also, yeah. Also, you hear about people that have like been around for like four or five years and they've just been slowly and then suddenly they just like... So. Yeah, it's just interesting. Like, well, it's just when the luck comes. Like, yeah. They could, they could have easily just been like, oh. Yeah. But then that's also not saying... Obviously, chase your dreams mm. and don't give up on them Yeah. within reason. But, like, say that point after four years was where they hit their, like, spike. Stride. If your, like, spike was after 25 years, it's like, is that then worth the... It's, it's really... I yeah. No, I get what you're saying. You didn't really make a lot of sense then, but I still got what you said. Mm. Um, I think we've been talking for so long now, and I've just realized that we've actually been chatting shit. I feel like we've had good conversations, though. Yeah. But I just looked at the time, and this has been a very long episode. So, if you enjoyed, guys, what can they do, George? Well, if you are watching, you can like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, make sure to ring. Oh, wait, how are we trying to get... 100K is a nice mark to get to. I think we're about yes. 80 at the moment. Listen, guys, we... Um, like we said, we didn't we didn't fall off we've just not been putting as much like effort into things but that's about to change so we want to make a 100k subscriber goal by by the time that it's the tour is that good yeah by may that's like mid-may yeah so then and if we do all of you on the tour will get a special gift you all uh, get uh, a sub 100k subscriber plaque you'll get every single blown one a kiss you. from me if we get to 100k subscribers by the time that it's the tour, then we will do something very big on we get tour. We to dress each other for... For the meet and greet. No, because we don't have time to change between them. Oh. Um, we could do it that we get to, like, dress each other for each show. No. That's quite a fun thing to do. No. We'll come up with something, but it'll be good. Okay. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, make sure if you're watching, like, subscribe, ring that notification bell so you're notified every time that we upload. If you're listening, give us a five-star rating. Subs can you put there? You can follow us. Follow us. And you can download us to a listener. Download us, us, baby. And if you would like to send in a dilemma, please do so via our email, the use of hotline podcast at gmail.com, or via our Instagram that we're also trying to get more followers on. And watch this space for more fun content coming soon baby but until next time if you go to either of our schools or you did ask about us um maybe they'll name a section of the school after us and maybe we would like that a lot the belegde wing and not the one underneath his arms oh love you bye <laughs>